Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hess at Sabbath Fellowship. Our building's been locked for nearly two years. Call first, 612-315-6778. My options for finding a new space are limited. Um, and uh, it's been almost two years, so we're a virtual congregation right now. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, our, your reality, our reality, and our existence. We try not to be disparate. It has to match up with what you see. It has to be empirically possible. We're Beth Hess at Sabbath Fellowship. Today, we're going to be talking about the acceleration and the convergence of the third seal. You'll see signs of what's happening with the sixth seal affecting the third seal. If you doubt it, I wouldn't because it, you'll see it more in 2022. I believe the first seal opened up many years ago. The second seal has opened and now um, to the north, we're noticing the problems from the third seal. That is my particular eschatology. Many people disagree with me. In fact, one person chided me uh, yesterday and said, um, you, you seem to have an arrogance because you're the only one talking about this. Well, look around you, the signs are there. So the sixth seal is really uh, a great earthquakes and, and um, also uh, material, asteroids, things like that coming from the skies and dropping on your head. Well, that seems to be occurring right now. I'm going to give you the signs for that that set up more signs for the third seal. So the sixth seal exacerbates the third seal. What's the third seal? Uh, when the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, go. I looked and there was a black horse. Its rider held the scale and I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living creatures saying, one quart of wheat for a day's pay, three quarts of barley for a day's pay, but do not damage the olive oil or the wine. Well, we're getting to that point right now where the prices are going up very dramatically. We'll show you more charts and graphs on that and, and reasons. So what just happened um, on Friday was that in Kentucky, we had tornadoes. It looked like four of them touched down. It was more than 70 killed. It looks like 100. And this is the wintertime, people. We don't have tornadoes during in Kentucky, say, during the winter. And the Illinois, too. Um, so it was, it was devastating. It was horrific. I feel sorry for the families. Please continue to pray for those poor families. Um, so yeah, they, they assume that it's a hundred people and it's been rising significantly. Uh, it, it's devastating. So what's going on? Well, according to Ben Davidson from Suspicious Observers, we've got five scary years ahead of us, and he's going to give you some reasons why. There should be an intensification. The coronal mass ejections, which are burps basically from the sun, will be increasing, and coronal wind will be increasing. And the shields, the magnetosphere above our head, the electromagnetosphere, it's thinning, it's, it's collapsing. So you'll see more extreme weather like you just saw in Kentucky. So we'll try to explain that to you. Now, there are many, many, many channels out there saying, oh, we're going into a global minimum, you know, climate minimum. Not really, not yet. We'll probably pop up for a little while here, More have, have more solar activity, then go into the minimum after that. So we might have five years of kind of a, a, a small maximum, but it's a maximum. So it's going to go up, then it'll go down. So I, I trust Ben and I trust his scientists more than I do some guys that are just Klingons. So what are we doing here? We're doing the philosophy of the end of days. We're talking about the third seal and it's being driven by the sixth seal. So we're going to have to get into some verses and prove that through. And first we'll talk about eschatology and, and what I do. So Sir Isaac Newton is a, pe a person that I really respect from 1867, or <laughs> about 1687, said about the time of the end, a body of men will be raised up who will turn their attention to the prophecies and insist upon their literal interpretation. That is where I go, people. In the most, in the midst, of much clamor and opposition. And people hate the fact that I try to literally solve revelation. Now, sometimes I'm wrong and sometimes I have to adjust, but I'm working on it from a literal basis. And I think that's the best way to go. So eschatology, the part of theology concerned with death, judgment, and the final destiny of the soul and humankind. In the context of mysticism, the term refers metaphorically to the end of ordinary reality and to the reunion, um, the olam haba, we would say it, to the reunion with the divine. And that's from the Oxford English Dictionary. So yes, that is what I'm doing. I'm trying to be as literal as possible with what's going on. And you should notice it too. You should be empirically seeing what's going on. 
So the verses, Isaiah 24, 34, Isaiah 13, and Revelation 6. So let's go through the verses. It goes pretty quick. Terror, pit, and trap are upon you. For those who are living on the earth, he who flees from the sound of terror will fall into the pit. He who climbs up out of the pit will be caught in the trap. For the windows of heaven, of heaven above have been opened. That seems to be the magnetosphere. And I'll prove it to you in a little bit here. And the earth's foundations shake. The earth cracks and breaks open. The earth crumbles to pieces. The earth trembles and totters. The earth staggers to and fro like a drunk. It sways back and forth like a watchman's shelter. Its transgression weighs heavy upon it. It will fall and not rise again. That's Isaiah 24. Moving on to Isaiah 13. This is why I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath of Adonai Tezvaot. That's the Lord God of armies on the day of his fierce anger, Isaiah 13, 13. Isaiah 34, the whole host of heaven will decompose. The heavens themselves will be rolled up like a scroll. That sounds like what, what's happening to the magnetosphere. All their array will wither away like a withering grape leaf that falls from a vine or a withered fig from a fig tree. For my sword has drunk its fill in heaven. Now it descends on Edom to judge them and the people I have doomed to destruction. Then finally, Revelation 6, 12 through 17, then I watched as he broke the sixth seal and there was great, a great earthquake and the sun turned black as sackcloth worn in mourning and the full moon became blood red. So that has to be at a certain point in time each month. The stars fell from heaven to earth just as a fig tree drops its figs. That means they're small. And when shaken by a strong wind, the sky receded like a scroll. That sounds like the magnetosphere being rolled up and every mountain and island was moved from its place. That is continental drift. And that is the same as Genesis 10, 25, when Peleg was alive in First Chronicles 2, when he's listed. So the earth's kings, rulers, and generals, and the rich and the mighty, indeed everyone, slave and free, hid himself in the caves and among the rocks in the mountains, and said to the mount mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide, hide us from the face of the one sitting on the throne and from the fury of the lamb, for the great day of their fury has come, and who can stand? So... The expert on all of this is John Haller. So I want to point this out every week so that you'll go see his, and he's not presenting today, which is interesting. So his, his points are that all of these things are converging right now. Acceleration, convergence, logistics, understanding. He does the macro and the micro. He does an hour and a half every week, if not twice a week. And I could barely do 30 minutes a week, but I do the micro, that's it. And I really do the philosophy of it. What's the thought behind it? He does everything, but he does not give his opinions that much. And people appreciate that. In his sphere of, of, of friendships, if he would be doing what I'm doing, people would hate him. I mean, people hate me for what I say. So um, he, he's able to function very well, giving a lot of information. So he is the best out there. He really is in, in total information. So I recommend that you hit him up every week, just not this week. Uh, he's kind of down on, on the weather. Uh, so the convergence of looming catastrophes. And, and so just keep that in mind as you move through. It's not just one thing here, or one thing there. It's the whole thing imploding. So this is from Ben Davidson, and he does Suspicious Observers. And I, I trust him for being wise about the research and, and verifying facts and things like that. So the big three for biblical end of days, impactors, earthquakes, volcanoes, then number two, tilt change, wobble, or rotation change. Number three, mantle heaving and lithosphere sphere displacement. It's, it will be greater volatility. That's what you're going to expect to see. And that's, that's a video that you can watch from December 28th of 2019. Next, as the magnetosphere weakens, faster upper level winds. You saw that in Kentucky. Increased pressure differentials. You saw that in Kentucky. Electrodynamic cloud microphysics. You're seeing that. You're seeing that. So he's predicting a magnetic reversal or at least a greater wobble. We don't know. We see these 6,000 and 12,000 year cycles where we see potential wobbling and reversal. And he's saying that the core is going to move just a little bit. And, and our core is not perfectly round anyway. It's oblong because of the, um, the equator 
and and the energy that it takes to to move but you'll notice that there will be this crustal disturbance and and that's what happens that's that's the polar reversal when could it occur who knows but the magnetosphere is thinning and that's causing more lightning tornadoes hail other problems so ben is correct on this and also we have this weird problem where we're already thinning so far that we have this South Atlantic anomaly. So you, if, you're, if you see it called an SAA, that means that literally in the South there, you've got this huge region that's kind of triangular that, that has horrible gaps. And so um, the, the UV rays come through, other things come through. It's just, it's a hole <laughs> and it's horrific. And so when you have these horrible shocks from solar wind or CMEs, it's going to get through there even worse. So you would hate to be in South America, Southern um, Africa, or in New Zealand, or in um, Australia, because it's going to affect them even worse, because th there's nothing protecting them at times, or very little. So there are these holes, and that's the SAA, South Atlantic Anomaly. And we have these shocks every now and then from solar wind, and we have the Van Allen belts, and we have the magnetosphere, and the magnetos paws, and the magneto tail. We have those things to protect us, but if they thin out, we have less protection, and that's what's happening, and it's starting to hockey stick down. So um, this is a, a paper on the deepening of radiation belt particles in South Atlantic anomalies, SAA region, a scenario over the past 120 years. The abstract is the geomagnetic field has an unusual weak spot over South America and South Atlantic Ocean. And so this SAA is, is, is really, um, it's, it's decreasing consistently. It's a rapid decrease of the magnetic field. And we don't know why. And, and the lowest altitudes are encountered by uh, horrible, horrible problems with weather. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's you know, weakened field, average deepening rate uh, is whatever per year, deepening increased. Yeah, so it's, it's frightening if you live in the Southern Hemisphere. So we have these, we, we have the sun out there and it's constantly throwing particles at us, but sometimes it gives us more either in solar waves or in CMEs, but there are disasters that happen and they happen frequently. You know, 1859, we had the Carrington event and we've had other, well, 1833, um, November, December, we had a meteorite shower that was amazing. So these things happen, but now it's worse because we have less protection. So. You know, in the picture to the right, we have a deeper loss. It's the belts are collapsing, thinning. The magnetosphere is thinning very, very quickly. I'll give you specifics on that in a second. And so the curve is accentuating. It's hockey sticking, we could say. We've had a 5% loss per year, and but now it's, you know, now it's, it, 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 it it was 10% from 1880 to 2000. It was 5% from 2000 to 2010. Now it's 5% lost per year. That's 1% every 72 days. And how rapid will the process become? I don't know, it's, it's getting bad. But that means the curve of the particle penetration is getting deeper. And so the particles are getting in closer and it's going to affect weather. And it's our protective shield and it's weakening. So once again, I said by by 2000, it was a 10% loss. By 2010, it was a 15% loss in addition to that. You know, um, so it was 10% plus 5%. So um, previously, researchers estimated the field was weakening about 5% per century, but the new data revealed the field is actually weakening 5% per decade or 10 times faster than we thought. That could mean that there's a flip coming, people. Okay, so Earth's magnetic poles are getting ready to flip. Uh, said uh, Rune Fluerberger Hagen, the ESA, so that's Eastern, I mean, that's European rather, Space Agency, Swarm's mission manager. So they see this happening, the role of ge geomagnetic field, geomagnetic field intensity and late quaternary evolution of humans and, and large mammals. What they're getting at is geomagnetic instability could equal ELE extinction level events or deaths. And that's what we're expecting. And that's the sixth seal driving all of this, and, but it'll affect the third seal, trust me, as it increases almost 100 times faster than current changes. So it's a deeper loss. It's collapsing fast, almost 100 times faster than current changes. That means extreme directional changes are associated with the movement of reverse flux across the core surface. So you're going to sign, see signs of a new geomagnetic jerk 
between 2019 and 2020 from swarm and observatory data. So you're going to see all sorts of strange things occurring in the electromagnetosphere like a drunk. Okay, remember from the Bible? So just get ready to see weird things occurring in your weather patterns. So don't count on the whole weekend being wonderful and sweet and count on perfect weather and then suddenly a tornado comes. Count on that. So seal six, the Genesis pole shift, when, where, Ben and others are saying there's going to be a pole shift potentially. And Ben is saying it's going to pass through the Bermuda Triangle into South America. And then um, that would be the North Pole, I believe. And then the South Pole is going to go up towards the Dragon's Triangle, um, south of India there. And you're going to have horrible wobbling and horrible problems with the field, field aligned currents. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So this is um, major fault destabilizing solar galactic connection, solar tornadoes. And if you have solar tornadoes, you're going to have earthly ones too. So cyclical deluge, he's saying every 6,000 years, every 12,000 years, we have these ELE events. And so you could say it's, it's religious because there are myths. There are many stories that go back about say the flood story or other horrible stories that seem to point to earth tilt problems it just happens. So magnet, mag, magnetism changes uh, drive destabilization. And that's what we're going into right now. And then pretty much done now, cosmic rays thin the ozone. So sunlight makes ozone, but particle energy destroys ozone. Well, the particle energy is getting in closer now. So it's going to destroy more ozone. And so you're not gonna have the same level of protection coming up. Now we'll move on. Gerald Salente is a prognosticator. And um, I want to add in one thing by Dr. David Martin, that Social Security will be broke by 2026. And I'm part of that generation. I'm part of the reason why that would break, because I'm getting into my 60s now, and I would be retiring at some point in time. And I'm my class of uh, 1980, or rather 77, my college class was 81. We are the largest high school graduating class in the history of America, according to what I've read. And when we retire, it's going to just break everything. So Salente is saying that we're going to have problems globally on the economic front. It's going to be horrific, uh, just, just up, down, all over the place and, and crazy things happening. Trends in the markets, the markets are going to be skitterish over all the problems that are collapsing at the same time. Survivalism, that's going to be the big issue going forward. Cryptocurrencies, if the dollar is falling, people are going to go towards crypto. Um, and then there's also the war over the jab. So he's predicting that it's, you know, uh, wars over the jabs, military wars, economic upheaval, uh, new predictions of the future of former candidates, things like that. So lots of wars going on. And so um, Salente is interesting on this. So I, I don't always recommend him, but right now, yeah, uh, we should be looking at the 2022 trends, the predictions, the collapse, COVID, uh, wars, all the stuff that Salente is talking about. And this is from Greg Hunter. So this is from Michael Snyder, smart guy, um, friend of mine. Um, I, sometimes I ask him to do this particular type of an article, which is the 10 plagues, one of the big 10 plagues. And uh, every now and then he has the time to, to listen to me and, and do that. So historic flooding in Western Europe, which will affect crops. Uh, once in a thousand year flooding in China, countless numbers of birds are dropping dead, billion dead sea creatures, number four, number five, mega drought, number six, plague of grasshoppers, that's biblical. Number seven, crop losses. Number eight, gigantic wildfires. Number nine, mammoth dust storms. And number 10, the variant, the jab variant. The plagues are trending badly, much worse. Now, we're going to move on to another issue, which is wind is great, solar is great, but it doesn't produce ammonia. We need ammonia. We need either cow poop or we need ammonia. And this is from John Little. And I don't cite him very often. I don't know if he's a friend or a, he's an eschatologist. And he writes for Omega Shock. And um, he's saying scarcity and famine, December 11th, 2021. And he's citing that Fritz Haber back in 1909 noticed that we were going to have food scarcity. So he started, he's a chemist and he, he figured out how to 
produce ammonia from um oh goodness why am i blanking on the process that from oil uh, from gas rather from natural gas and so you put the gas under high pressure and you mix air and hydrogen and suddenly you have ammonia and you can create a great fertilizer so the problem is the world's population went nuts after 1909 and he was part of the reason why we could have more people and feed all those people but the problem was also that the German bombs, well, he, he used ammonia and other things like that to help kill people. Um, so yeah, he could make ammonia for bombs. Yeah, great. The irony that Germany would never have done as much damage in World War I without the Haber-Bosch process of creating nitrogen compounds that their bombs and bullets needed. So, you know, the Kaiser used that. So billions of people owe their existence to Haber and Bosch because they produce 235 million tons of ammonia every year as of 2019 to be able to feed the population. Otherwise, people would be dying. So crop yields would collapse, food would get horribly expensive, the poor would go hungry without this particular process. And we don't produce enough cow poop. Cow poop is great, but there isn't enough of it, and there's no way to get that done. You need ammonia. You need the, the Haber-Bosch process. Uh, requires natural gas, lots of natural gas. And we can produce that, but our governments are saying they don't want natural gas production anymore. They want to go with solar and wind. Well, that means people are going to starve and you'll have to choose between heating our homes or having enough food to eat. So we had a food crisis back, crisis back in 2007, 2008 and an oil crisis began in 2006. So rising fuel costs will push up the price of food and the third world will starve. So an Arab Spring was caused because of food. So people need to feed their kids. And we've added almost a billion people in just the last few years here. So how do we feed 7.9 billion people? And how do we transport the food around or the fertilizer around? You know, that people are anti-oil and, and ammonia is, is really the, the problem. We need ammonia constantly to be able to feed people. And also we need phosphates from China. And China won't is banning phosphate uh, transportation because they need it to feed their own people. They have 1.4 billion people. So without phosphates, you can't have fertilizer. So China needs to feed their people, obviously. So to keep the chemistry lesson as simple as possible, you need natural gas to produce ammonia and energy from fossil fuels to mine for phosphates. You need ammonia and phosphate to make fertilizer. You need fertilizer to grow food at scale. You need food to keep the peace in the world. Without food, you're going to have war. So the trend, as I talked about, we had 4 million people in 10,000 BCE. We had 190 million back um, in the year zero. And now we're at 7.8 billion people basically in the year 2021. Trends more people, less fertilizers and farming. The governments could care less about it. So it took the Haber-Bosch process to have a population effect. Uh, so a little while, um, basically, as soon as it started to kick in, we could, we could have more people because babies weren't dying because they were starving to death. So World War II happened as a result of Haber-Bosch also, unfortunately, because it, they, we became so much better at producing uh, bombs. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, the ability to make inexpensive fertilizer feeds people. Otherwise, people go hungry. It means unrest and violence will rule our streets. So right now, Biden's new aggressive, regressive methane tax will raise average America's gas bill by 17%. So that's from Tyler Durden of, um, oh goodness, I'm blanking on um, his, his site that he writes for. Um, Zero Hedge. Um, and that's Sunday, December 12th, 2021. So Biden is going to have a regressive methane tax that will even make it worse for people. 17% worse. So now we move on from that article. And this is more from Michael Snyder. He says Max Labo, but I know this is Michael Snyder. And weapon, weaponization of food, starvation to manufacture compliance. So the governments know that they want to starve us out because we're going to die anyway from all sorts of other reasons. So why not <laughs> introduce certain things that, or, or to decrease the ability to move food around or to produce food or to harvest food or whatever it is. So the governments are doing horrific things to weaponize food and it's going to get worse. 
The third horseman rides famine, plague, and inflation. Um, the co-op bosses are warning the grocery shortages are at the worst level ever seen amid empty shelf crisis. It's going to get worse. It's, I'm noticing it now. Um, global food prices keep on rising. You can see that in the middle. And then food, food prices rise sharply in 2021. And so you can see things starting to hockey stick. You're not quite noticing it yet. You're noticing that the shelves are empty, but you're not seeing the food prices go through the roof yet. That'll happen. 2022 is going to be worse. Then the third horse, horseman is driven by God, not by man. So these unusually hot and cold weather systems along the same latitude are causing the, the weather changes. It, it, the food supplies are in jeopardy due to the weather, but it's not driven by man. It's not man-made people. It's these climate extremes are driven by God. Okay, it's, it's, it's time. We're getting close to the end of days. We're in the third horseman, and that's what's going on. So um, plunging crop supplies send prices soaring and reignite food inflation fears, as WASDE reports. So this is Tyler Durden, again, from Zero Hedge, and declining grain supplies, slashed estimates for corn yields and stockpiles. It takes a while, but we'll have these mega droughts, back-to-back -back heat waves have plagued the Corn Belt, and the U.S. West for much of the summer. So this is 2021, August 12th, around harvest time. So we know that the grains index is going to start to spike. We know it. So the middle class, what happens to them? Well, basically, as we have um, the Nixon crisis of 1971 and getting off the gold standard, and then all the speculation and all the other things that we've done on the oil standard, um, that means the middle class gets wiped out. And that's what's happening right now. So you can see all the charts and everything like that. Debt goes through the roof, and the middle class doesn't do well with debt. The wealthy can handle it. The, the poor, they get assistance. The middle class get wiped out as debt increases. So just keep that in mind. And so you can see the global central bank balance sheet is just going right up. Yeah, brutal debt. So the third horseman rides fires. So you're noticing more fires every single year. Climate change drives that. Once again, that's caused by solar activity and other activities, and, and, and it's not driven by man. It just isn't. Your spitting in the ocean doesn't affect the ocean. So darkness looms because there is no sign of global energy crisis abating. Well, that's because the politicians don't want that to happen. So Rabel Bank is asking, when are the locusts due to arrive? Because it's so many different plagues happening at the same time. And then little things like um, Evergrande from China is collapsing. So that's going to affect the markets. So we have so many different crises happening at the same time. And, you know, Tucker Carlson, this is what inflation really is in the United States. And he's given a real answer on that. That's on Fox. And um, this is an article from today, what inflation really is in the United States. And it's brutal. So what is my theory of what's happening right now? According to my eschatology, the seven seals open silently and each one increases over time. The first seal is white. It's West, um, based on Zechariah 6 directions. It opened around the six day war of a time frame of 1967, but sometime before 2001. My observation is the Western civilization has been collapsing since 1968. And um, I'm blanking on the name of the gentleman, but there um, is an interesting video out there by, he has three names and he's from a Pacific Institute and Victor Davis Hansen, that's it. And he says the West is collapsing and he's right. So it's been collapsing since 1968. It really sounds like ethnos epi ethnos. So ethnic peoples fighting against each other from Matthew 24. And that's how it starts out from uh, 24, six through eight. The second seal opened 9, 11, 2001, bringing Basileia epi Basileia. That's kingdoms fighting kingdoms per Matthew 24. So that's the next first, not first, but next uh, words in Matthew 24 there and six. Um, it started in Afghanistan and spread to Iraq. Since then, 2011, it has spread across the Middle East uh, via Muslim Spring. Seal 3 is only the only one that I have direct reference in terms of prophecies. It was prophesied and explained by another man. So prophesied by one, explained by another, with 1 Kings 12 as the, the core verses. It was prophesied exactly and explained in a scriptural way. It opened north of Jerusalem during the summer of 2012. Food scarcity will be frightening worldwide by next year in 2022. And um, it's the word limo from Matthew 24 applies here. And keep in mind that uh, in a good text of Matthew 24, it should say limo and loimo. 
and that means that you're going to have two different types of crop failure and that's what we're seeing right now the signs of seal 4 which would be seal 4 is about death okay and this means 1.9444 billion deaths by four different plagues are amongst us but i'm not sure if we're really in it yet um and so keep this in mind in terms of bio warfare and things like that which is the uh, therion word um from from uh blah, blah, <laughs> revelation 6 8 that when i got sick a few months ago i lost my sense of taste and smell so just be aware of that that, that it was a bioweapon it was seal four is that bioweapon plus three other plagues seal five is martyrdom so what should happen is that somebody's going to be angry with the fact that believers are not taking the medicine we'll call it <laughs> you know what i'm talking about okay and and there will be a repercussion against the believers and that's seal five then seal six we've been talking about burning figs coming from the sky and that great earthquake that moves the mountains we are in the birth pangs we're up we're, we're seeing signs of seal four we're seeing seal six affect seal three we are not in the great tribulation we're getting closer we are accelerating, we're seeing a convergence, we're seeing the logistics of it, the problems, and we're seeing understanding um, that some of us are, are understanding what's going on. What I want you to read on your own is Jeremiah 29, 11, because there is hope during these time frames. And then we would go into the Great Tribulation at the last half of the three and a half, of the seven years. This is the the season where you should be celebrating things like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur when your garments need to be white and clean. It's a wedding. And so Yeshua is returning. So be blessed and take care. And I'll see if I can turn the video off. Be blessed.